The ousted HHS vaccine researcher Rick Bright, Dr. Rick Bright, has been testifying that his early warnings about the threat of COVID-19 were, he says, ignored, and that the window is now closing for government action to prevent an even greater crisis. I believe with proper leadership and collaboration across government, with the best science leading the way, we can devise a comprehensive strategy. The time is running out because the virus is still spreading everywhere. People are getting restless to leave their homes. When you look at the first four months of this year, would you describe the uh, government's uh, and the administration's response as a success or a failure? I believe we could have done better. I believe there are critical steps mm -hmm. that we did not take in time. And joining me now, MSNBC's Garrett Haig on Capitol Hill, NBC White House correspondent Jeff Bennett, Dr. Mario Ramirez, former acting director for pandemics and emerging threats at the Department of Health and Human Services, Dr. Kavita Patel, primary care physician, former health policy director in the Obama administration, and White House correspondent Kristen Welker. Garrett, first to you, you were in the room. Uh, we've been listening to this hearing for more than two hours. Tell us about the highlights. How is Dr. Bright's allegation holding up? Well, Bright is painting a picture of a federal bureauc bureaucracy, particularly at HHS, that was very slow to respond to concerns about everything from the virus itself to a lack of PPE to a general lack of preparedness. And then when it did respond, focused on, in his view, the wrong things. Now, it's always interesting to hear a scientist uh, or any kind of technical professional questioned by largely non-technical members of Congress, but you are, in the course of this hearing, having teased out uh, some of these important elements of alarms that uh, Dr. Bright says were raised and ignored. I mean, as to the hearing itself, this is another example of Congress continuing to find its footing in the coronavirus era, uh, being in that hearing room. The members are spaced out. All but one, when I was in the room, were wearing a mask. But the usual uh, drama and pomp and circumstance of a major congressional hearing like this is absent. For a good portion of the time that I was in the room, I was the only reporter in a room that would normally be full of staff and reporters and uh, members of the public who would be wanting to hear testimony like this, Andrea. And Jeff Bennett at the White House, the president is about to depart for Allentown, Pennsylvania, one of his unusual trips during this COVID-19 pandemic and the shutdown in Pennsylvania. Let's talk about how he is responding. He apparently is continuing to call Dr. Bright a disgruntled employee, and he's got the HHS secretary, uh, Alex Azar, with him. Is that correct? Uh, you're you're right about that, Andrea. In fact, as I stand here and talk to you right now, President Trump is on the South Lawn as he prepares to get on Marine One uh, to eventually head to Pennsylvania, as you rightly point out, his second trip to a battleground electoral state in the in the last two weeks. But yes, he is with the, the Health and Human Services Secretary. And according to our friend and colleague Jeff Mason, who is part of the the small pool of reporters who's there speaking with the president. President Trump said again that Dr. Bright looks to him to be an angry, disgruntled person. And Secretary Azar, according to Jeff Mason, says that everything Dr. Bright is complaining about was achieved. Now, Dr. Bright taped an interview previously with another network, and he says he's not disgruntled. He says that he's frustrated. He's frustrated by a lack of leadership and by a lack of preparedness. Now, previously, President Trump had said, in fact, earlier this morning, he tweeted that he did not know Dr. Bright, had never heard of him. And that's conceivable because up until now, Dr. Bright led a government agency that was fairly obscure. But because Dr. Bright oversaw the government agency that is charged with investing in and developing vaccines, you could make the argument, and many have made this argument, that President Trump should have known who Dr. Bright is. Uh, given that public health, per, public health experts say the only way out of this, the only way we can re return to some sense of normalcy, is through widespread testing, which we currently don't have, or a vaccine. And Dr. Patel, let's talk about the, the overall picture that Dr. Bright has presented of a delayed government response. Your evaluation of that as you've been watching. Yeah, he's been trying to lay out, you know, a pretty objective set of, of measures that did not get accomplished. And so he's he's reinforcing what I think we've been hearing from other public health officials like Dr. Tony Fauci, that we are not ready to both reopen the country and also feel like Americans have the confidence to 
come out of our homes and, and be able to cope with this virus. So what he laid out, and I realize that a lot of it is mixed in with his whistleblower, whistleblower status, Andrea, but he is trying to paint the picture that a vaccine is far away from coming soon, which is something we've heard. And that number two, we just do not have the necessities PPE, testing, swabs, all those details we've been hearing about, we still don't have what we need in place. So it's it's bleak. But I also think that people like Dr. Bright are saying what a lot of us are saying, that we need to let the voices of the scientists be heard. And we need a strategy to help us find a way towards recovery. It doesn't need to be science versus recovery. The two can work hand in hand. And one of the arguments that he was making, or part of his testimony, involved the N95 masks. He was talking about a, a government contract where some of the masks that had been checked were only 30 percent effective and that are now in use by nurses. So that's part of his argument that the stockpiling was not done effectively and the contracting was not done effectively. Uh, Dr. Ramirez, I wanted to play something also that he had, had to say in, in response to questions from Congressman Frank Pallone from New Jersey about the government's ability to get a vaccine out quickly. Let's watch. I've been very critical of the administration in terms of their, I call it incompetence with the supply chain, with lack of testing. Uh, I'm afraid the same thing is going to happen with vaccines and, once it's, and the distribution. I mean, should I be concerned? Absolutely, sir. I'm, we're already seeing those challenges with limited doses of remdesivir with data that we're getting that remdesivir has some benefit in people. And we have limited doses and we haven't scaled up production and we don't have a plan on how to fairly and equitably distribute that drug. Dr. Dr. Ramirez, your response to that part of the testimony? Certainly. I, I think Dr. Bright is raising a key concern. Uh, you know, we faced this a little bit during the Ebola epidemic when we were thinking about how we might actually distribute a vaccine in West Africa. It's absolutely critical that folks are thinking through these plans and creating a viable distribution strategy. And Dr. Bright raises a great point about remdesivir. Uh, there's been a lot of reporting this last week uh, about uh, misclarity about how remdesivir is actually being distributed in the country. And I think if we get to a point where there's actually a vaccine and we mirror that, on a much greater scale, that could create significant problems in this country. I think Dr. Bright's raising a very important point. I also want to point out that uh, Christian Welker is with us as well. Christian, the president is speaking now about hydroxychloroquine, defending hydroxychloroquine. Of course, that's a central part of this whistleblower complaint from Dr. Bright, saying that it had not been adequately tested when it was being pushed by the president and other political leaders at the White House briefings. Uh, but he's also talking uh, more generically about the whole, with, with uh, Alex Azar there, about the whole conflict so far, and I wanted to play a little bit of what the president had yesterday said yesterday about Dr. Fauci, because this is also part of the political debate today. Let's play that, and I'll talk to you on the other side. Dr. Fauci yesterday was a little cautious on reopening the economy too soon. Uh, do you share his concern about reopening what? Reopening the economy too soon. Some states. Look, he wants to play all sides of the equation. Uh, I think we're going to have a tremendous fourth quarter. I think we're going to have a transitional third quarter. And I think we're going to have a phenomenal next year. When you say Dr. Fauci is playing both sides, are you suggesting that the advice well, is given to you? I was different. surprised by his answer, actually, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, it's just, to me, it's not an acceptable answer, especially when it comes to schools. So that was part of what he had to say in criticizing Dr. Fauci yesterday. Not all of what he had to say. He was very critical of Dr. Fauci, more overtly critical than in previous comments where there has been ongoing tension behind the scene. Kristen, while we wait for the president's, for the tape from the South Lawn to be replayed by the pool, the small pool that was with him, uh, what is your response on the tension between Dr. Fauci coming from the White House and whether you think something more uh, aggressive is going to happen. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, Andrea. That was the sharpest rebuke, if you will, that we have heard from President Trump about messaging by Dr. Fauci. This has been the source of ongoing tension between President Trump and his top doctor because Dr. Fauci has consistently tried to give what he believes is uh, the reality check 
on this situation. And so there you had it again when he was testifying remotely. And he said that a vaccine likely wouldn't be ready in order to help schools to reopen. Clearly, that's not the messaging that President Trump wants to project. He wants more positive messaging as he looks to reopen parts of the economy and as he looks to his reelection campaign. I've been speaking with administration officials who say this is nothing new. It's nothing different. They underscore, though, that Dr. Fauci likely not in trouble of being sidelined entirely uh, as a part of the task force because the information that he has is so relevant and so critical to resolving this. But what we have seen, Andrea, is Dr. Burks, for example, uh, take a much larger role publicly in terms of the messaging when she's standing with the president at some of these events. So uh, these tensions are ongoing. Not clear, though, that there is going to be any type of movement in terms of uh, removing him or sidelining him on the task force. And it does come as President Trump is heading to Pennsylvania. And some of these tensions are on display there. The Democratic governor uh, insisting that some parts of the state stay closed. Uh, a lot of Pennsylvanians have been protesting that. President Trump siding with them. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.